uh, it's uh, very difficult to uh, understand this unless you have a little bit more exposure to uh, the matrix operations and all the time. Um, but I, I, I don't expect that one. Um, so the goal is not to fully understand this tough materials, but I know uh, it's very useful. So um, when you go to um, a MATLAB and uh, any other the software and you see enforce it, or uh, MOS, uh, um, MOSP, uh, these two are very famous, um, and specific algorithms uh, uh, for subspace method. Uh, so what you need to do is just uh, collecting input to output the data, uh, time sequence data, put in and put it into a particular matrix form, and then give it to uh, um, these uh, software components then what you get is state space uh, uh, matrix um, coefficients. So A, B, C, D uh, can be obtained. So it's a wonderful method, um, but there are a few uh, the tricky things and then you better know what's really inside uh, rather than just, just to use it. Um, uh, some uh, tricky situations that may happen. So you should know what's, what's going on inside. So uh, this is the theory for the user uh, not for the researcher. So I just skip some of the uh, tedious part, but uh, that's good enough uh, uh, to use these methods uh, as users. So um, this is lecture 18, the last uh, on the lecture on, and in part three, linear system identification. So um, last time we um, look at the, uh, um, you know, the, uh, the motivation, starting with the motivation behind this method. I uh, remember that the um, um, prediction error method, uh, that is very, uh, you know, um, kind of classic. And then why do we use the method? Uh, however, uh, the parameters involved often not linearly involved in the um, predictor. It turns out that uh, you have to solve the non-convex optimization problem and that's really hard. Um, on the other hand, if you look at the steady equations, um, you know, system matrices A, B, C, D are linearly involved. So this should be a much easier um, formulation. In fact, the uh, two equations, steady equations and uh, output equations, you can put them into this convenient uh, form, um, just uh, putting the all and the parameters to estimate A, B, C, D in one big matrix of uh, and a theta. Um, and then separate out uh, regressor part of V and then output to YT in this way, right? So this is a linear regressor, great. Um, however, um, important part that you have to pay attention here is that, uh, well, the U and the Y are input output data, but we have X. Well, in fact, we are talking about the, the systems and the input is U and then y, y, you know, output is Y, but X is something the variables that you don't know, you have to create on your own. And this formulation, um, even though it looks like the linear uh, regression, but um, what X I use here, who's gonna give you the X? Well, this is something that you have to create from input to U and then output to Y. And this problem to create the internal representation in terms of the state of variables. Um, and actually from uh, input to output uh, uh, models such as the uh, transfer functions or impulse response, we need to create the internal representation X. That is the problem it's called the realization realization. So uh, the last time we look at the whole Kalman's realization uh, you know, method, and uh, you found a very interesting uh, relationship in, in there by place, by using Henkel matrix, right? So you have input to output relationship represented for instance, um, impulse response. So G1, G2, G3 are available. Okay, and then we like to find the um, um, you know state and then uh, um, associated with the ABCD matrices. Or that that's actually a, a whole common realization program. And then now we are dealing with the 
multi input to multi output the case okay? so, so impulse response is basically you know given by a series of matrices g1 g2 g3 and so forth so now in and uh, Henkel matrix, we put this one in a particular order, G1, G2, G3, up to say sufficiently large number K, which is a larger than N. And then the second line, you start with G2, G3, G4, up to GK plus one. Uh, you press this way, or you can put it in this way, G1, G2, G3. Um, at the end, you get the same equation, the same matrix, where you see the, uh, you know, you know uh, skew, uh, diagonal elements, they are all the same. Okay, this line all G2, and then this line all G3, next line all G4, G4, G4. And then actually this longest, uh, the, you know, <coughs> line is all GK. This, this is called the Henkel matrix, and we use this uh, particular matrix to form extensively in um, subsystem, subsystem method. Now, uh, by checking the, uh, the uh, uh, convolution equations, uh, so with the um, impulse response, uh, we can find the G1 is basically CB using an ABCD matrix uh, you know, uh, representation, and the G2 is a CAB that we derived this one the last time, right? So we can fill uh, this matrix replacing all Gs by you know, ABCD, and then you get this expression. Good. Now, interesting part is that this one can be nicely decomposed to these two big matrices. And I you know this is very familiar in you know, a form, this one too. This is nothing but the observability matrix. And then this guy is contributing matrix, right? So Henkel matrix of the impulse response can be represented the, the product of uh, observability matrix and the contrability, or well, in fact, this one is a, a reachability matrix. The product between the two, you know, um, gives this guy. Okay, so what we like to do is, you know, once we have observability and the contrability matrix individually, then we can find the ABCD, the process, and, you know, we discussed also the last time. So, you know, we like to uh, find the OK, CK individually. But you know that the X is internal representation. There are tons of different ways of representing the internal in or in internal states, not unique. Um, but uh, and, and in fact, uh, if you pick the wrong one, uh, you don't, although it is okay uh, as far as the mathematical meanings, but I know um, in an independent set of state variables, however, um, uh, you know, it exhibits some of the unwanted uh, behavior, for instance, Observability is pretty bad. Uh, contrability is strong, but observability bad. So in system, um, you know, um, system dynamics and area, um, there's actually very recommended, uh, um, you know, ways of splitting observability and then contrability and matrices, and uh, that's called the balanced realization. And then we take the um, the um, we take the uh, um, uh, single value decompositions, and then half of them put in here, and a half of them put in here. That's a balanced uh, you know, uh, realization. Both the contrability and the observability are strong in that way. Anyway, so um, that is something uh, we discussed uh, the last time. Once we know, um, you know, contrability of the beauty matrix, and uh, we can find the, um, the C and on all. Um, system parameter matrix is uh, quite easy. Now that is the story when we are given impulse response, right? But I know our goal is to um, find the ABCD matrices from input to output uh, in the data, input to output the data instead of the transfer functions or impulse response, okay? So um, this is actually the starting point of subspa subspace method. And the subsystem method uh, uses a very specific you know, technique in doing that. Um, first of all, we uh, uh, use the so-called uh, uh, Henkel matrix input to data. So input to data is actually U0, U1, U2. And we place these uh, input vectors 
um, we're dealing with the multi input, multi output cases. So, um, input to U is also um, vectorial quantity, M dimensional, M dimensional vector. And then we place this one in this way. And then actually, to form a Hinkel matrix, second lines, uh, we start with the U1, U2, um, blah, 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 UN, right? So I know we do this, uh, you know, K times and here, and then you create the, uh, this kind of uh, input data matrix in, uh, in Henkel matrix form. Output side two, we have uh, Y0, Y1, Y2, and then Y1, Y2, and the cycle through this and up to this point. And often we put this in you know, upside and uh, upper part and the lower part of a big, big matrix. And uh, collectively we call that the data matrix, W. W is an U and a, and a Y. Uh, let me remind you that the two subscri subscripts here, in the first one is this index zero and the second one is this index. Well, we do, do not specify explicitly N, but N is just the number of samples and we just assume this is big enough, big enough. Okay, we go to a K plus N minus two and something big numbers, not so much essential. And then K is to be, you know, um, although we don't know the state, um, you know, um, and the number of uh, independent state variables n um, order of the system, um, so um, we, uh, you know, set the K to be um, presumably larger than n. Okay, if um, you you uh, assume that the uh, n to be somewhere, you know, ten or 10 or you know, 12, then maybe you should set the K to be 15 or 20 or something like, you know, bigger and you know, large enough in doing that. Okay, now the one critical you know, you know, technique we use, and you know, at the end of the day, we don't use this particular one, but I know uh, it's important to explain the concept of this particular example is very good. So let's think about the you know, uh, impulse uh, input that actually uh, hit the uh, system at the time slot the t equal three. So you know uh, if you look at the uh, this first line, first line in here um, column, u zero is zero, and the u one is zero, and the u two is zero. At the u three, we uh, put the one there, and then actually you know after that all oh, zero. Um, so here, actually, you know, we slice the one time slot. Uh, so starting with the U1, right? U1 is zero, U2 equals zero, U3 is one. And then uh, after that, it's all zero. So when you formulate this uh, Hengelo matrix, uh, impulse input at the time slot uh, T equals three can be written in this way, okay? So now let's look at the output side. Uh, this is actually data matrix. So output, output side and actually, you know, um, you know the, this part. So uh, time t equals zero, then nothing, you know, so time t equals um, one, zero, um, y2 is zero, y3, because this input comes in and the g not shows up, right? And uh, after that, then starting here, and uh, Y1, Y2, Y3, it's uh, hitting something. And then, you know, uh, impulse response is some kind of, uh, you know, um, uh, non-zero output uh, comes out, right? That's G1. And this one continue this, and G0, G0, uh, G0, G2 in this way. So, um, you know, just following uh, this uh, Hinkle matrix uh, structure, you can feel this kind of matrix, right? Now, interesting part is going further beyond this point, beyond this point, the input is all zero, you know, zero sequence. And then shown here is G1, G2, G3, G4. And this is actually impulse response is going up forever, right? And then next line is starting with the G2, you know, um, beyond this point is a, yeah, input uh, uh, the data matrix U, so not the uh, you know, um, output. So you have to start with the G2. That's actually, you know, this is this third, um, somewhere here, right? G2, G3, G4. So if you continue this, this particular part is actually filled with the all impulse response, um, you know, the, you know um, Gs. And in, in the previous slides, I showed capital G one, two, three, because uh, I just emphasized that the, uh, this, you know, in, multi input, multi output, but this particular example is uh, just uh, for the sake of uh, simplicity. 
I just uh, use the you know, uh, scalar input. So this G is actually a lowercase G's, G1, 2, 3, 4, shown here. So you know, what have we seen this? You know, what the sort of things uh, you know, um, we found for this type, particular type of uh, matrix, which is also the Henkel matrix. So you, if you look at the, this you know, a block matrix, a four by four matrix, this is still a Henkel matrix. And uh, you know, all the impulse responses are involved in here. So what do, did we say that we actually, you know, uh, this is one slide back, you know. So this this actually, you know, G is already, you know, G is actually, you know, Henkel matrix arranged in this way. And then that is actually decomposed to the product of observability matrix, okay, and then controversy CK, right? And now we see that, uh, you know, the, this part is actually Henkel matrix of uh, impulse response. So this can be broken down to, to the product of controversy and observability matrix, right? So by taking this singular value decomposition, we can find the um, um, you know observability and the contributing matrix you know out of it. So that's actually a good thing. So if you know we have some initial data, the mixture of this guy, which is actually you know put in, into the, this form, yeah. Uh, usually, that is not actually necessarily zero input. By the way, this kind of uh, response is called the zero input response, not the zero input, you know, impulse response. However, interestingly, if you construct uh, this matrix properly, we can create the, any kind of input output relationship that actually um, reflect the uh, the, uh, the systems that you are really modeling. Um, so so th that the systems of possible input to output can be created by this um, data matrix um, you have initially um, prepared. And then actually uh, that can be shown mathematically uh, in this way, um, basically uh, you know, um, linear combination of the, all the, um, the column vectors involved in here with the weights, the Z uh, and vector can produce any possible input output. Let me just write this one in a more explicitly in this form. So here's the actual original data matrix you prepare, okay? Now, now actually you um, uh, do some uh, column manipulations, you know, take the uh, linear combinations of column vectors. So for the first column, you multiply Z1, second column, uh, Z2, and then, and then, excuse me, goody three and so forth. So this can be written in, in this way, right? This is more, you know, um, visually uh, comfortable representations of um, linear combinations of all, you know, column vectors involved in the data matrix, right? So under certain conditions, under certain conditions, you know, this can create the our desire, our particular input output uh, relations, that's actually zero input response. Okay, zero input response. Um, so zero, zero, zero. And then uh, here's actually not the uh, real measured output, but instead we want to create this one from the data matrix that you provide. Okay, and you know, uh, we can you know, show, in fact, prove that if you collect this input output data, it is always possible to create the zero input response. And once you create the zero input responses, then um, you can actually find the um, uh, controversy and then observability matrix. So from that, uh, we can determine ABCD matrices. So that is the things that we discussed. So um, yeah, you know, you know, one important point is what is the uh, you know, assumptions, data, uh, what sort of properties, conditions that the, the data you collect must satisfy. That's one of the key questions. So let's actually look at that. So, you know, shown here is actually, this is the original um, discrete time state equations, right? And the output uh, that can be written this way. And the first one is the same one, the cut and paste on this guy. And then I like to create the yt plus one. And uh, yt plus one, then you can actually uh, you know, uh, use this expression. So originally, this is the t plus one is replaced by this. You get to this expression, right? 
And they're doing this, uh, you know, many times you can create the all yt, yt plus one, yt plus two. Let's put this one in this way. One particular column vectors of your um, output uh, you know, data matrix, right? So look at that as interesting. The XT is involved in all of them. So we can put them together. So, um, uh, you know, the result part is CCA, CA minus one. This is again, the observability matrix. And the result part is a big part here, shows up in the kind of lower uh, block triangular matrix. Um, if you separate the, all the input sequence in here, and uh, this part is so-called the topless uh, matrix form and having uh, ABCD matrix is in it. And here we separate out the input, which is actually in fact, uh, the sequence um, UT, UT plus one, UT minus K. So that's a part of the uh, one particular um, column vector involved in the input uh, and the data matrix, right? So uh, more succinctly, uh, we can collectively uh, write it in this way. You know, this is a observability matrix and then top of the matrix and then input the sequence. We put the, uh, this guy in this way. Now to create input the output the data matrices, we need to concatenate this one um, in many ways. So uh, here we are. So Y, you know, and then use uh, are replaced, uh, are arranged in this way. And then if you look at the each column, each column is nothing but the previous representation, you know, previous representation like this, or I should uh, point out this guy. Each column is, is like this. And, uh, um, you know, if you arrange that in a menu of them, uh, you can create a relationship between output the matrix, output the data matrix and input data matrix, okay? So, you know, uh, this output uh, data matrix is actually, you know, um, you know the concatenations of uh, big Ys in this way and then use them, you know, in this way. And to represent this, you know, we have to uh, uh, create this, you know, state X0, X1. This is basically, you know, at the time T equal T. Um, I, know, I know X are actually involved in this way. So, you know, that is the, arranged here, that, that is multiplied to um, observability, observability matrix, this guy, right? So I know this as a whole is to show the relationship uh, you know, uh, between input output, um, you know, Hinkle matrix uh, uh, and the data. So all uh, actually you know, succinctly, we can write in this way. This big you know, phi, phi k, and it comes from here comes from here, okay? So now um, to, to do some proper job, um, we need the uh, you know, assumptions. We had the three critical assumptions. Um, we always go to that, uh, you know, the three assumptions, the three assumptions. The first, first assumption A1 is that you know, this matrix and you know, X not involved in this you know, big uh, um, matrix relationship. This X naught uh, must be, you know, uh, full rank, N rank. Um, N is actually um, the true, you know, um, number of uh, state variables, independent state variables, or order of the systems. And uh, what this means is that then all the state must be visited, okay? So, or then reachable, you know, systems or controllable systems. And the second assumption is that the U, you know, not the K minus one must be MK. The rank must be MK. What this means is that the way you, when you create the uh, input the data sequence like this, you know, so each of them is M dimensional vector, right? So if you look at the first uh, row block in here, it's actually M by N um, matrix. Um, we expect that this one to be rank M, which is actually, you know, um, you know, rank M, that's actually full rank. So what that means that the, you know, looking at this, you must be able to find at least the M independent uh, um, vectors um, in this actually collection, right? Oh, you know, rank of uh, you, know, you know this rectangular part of a matrix, if that said rank M, that also applies to you know row-wise matrix um, and vectors. So um, 
you can find the m uh, linearly independent row vectors from here, from here. So this one, it dimensioned the capital N, uh, and uh, actually, you, know, you must find an M independent uh, um, you know, vectors there, right? Now, discarding the first U naught and adding a new one, the UN, uh, you look at the, uh, this block, and this too must be on a full rank, um, rank M, rank M. And then if you concatenate this line and this line together, you know, the total rank must be um, two times M. Meaning that uh, you add this one in a meaningful way um, so that it, you know, it may not actually overlap with this. In fact, actually, uh, you know, uh, U1 is shifted to this place and then U2 is shifted to this place. So, so it is easy to uh, you know, accomplish that kind of con you know, con uh, conditions so that you know, you know, this two blocks, two lines blocks having the uh, two M um, and a rank. You continue this until you actually, uh, you know, complete this, you know, K times. So, you know, um, the, uh, you know, dimension here is um, K times M, and then there's this one, uh, N. The uh, rank of this matrix that's actually being set here, M times K. M is again the input dimensions, and the K is actually uh, this K. Hmm. The third assumption is actually the physical sense is that we have no state feedback, linear state feedback, so that the uh, uh, use involved in here is not actually a linear combination of X naught. That what this actually, you know, conditions means. So this rank is MK plus N. Okay, so under these uh, assumptions, um, we can say that uh, from uh, the uh, um, data matrix you put together here, we can always create an arbitrary, you know, uh, whatever the possible input output relationship, including this zero input uh, uh, response can be created, can be created. So this, um, you know, input data matrix is rich enough, you know, rich enough, satisfying the three conditions. Okay, so now, um, well, you know, this is actually, you know, the kind of, you know, demonstrating that uh, the FD data is good enough, uh, you know, with it's actually, you know, uh, column manipulations, um, we can actually create the, you know, this particular, um, you know, um, input up relationship. Uh, but in fact, uh, the, we can actually find the many Z that is to achieve this, and you know, you can. Uh, transform this one into this form where actually, um, you know, upper uh, right uh, block is all zero. So this particular part in particular, this guy is zero input response. And uh, you need to find the uh, proper um, uh, Z that is actually, you know, good enough to uh, do this uh, job. Now, this particular part is, you know, um, interesting. Of course, and the theory I described up to this point is something like this, and then that's actually um, and quite uh, um, solid. Um, however, there's actually a very useful uh, computational algorithms. It's called the LQ decomposition or actually QR decomposition that allows you to find this form uh, in one shot, the one actually, uh, you know, um, uh, Mat Matlab command. Um, and with that, uh, you can actually uh, find this particular structure at the same time, the you know, correction of zeta like this, that's actually having a more, you know, um, uh, you know um, desirable properties. In fact, uh, you know, um, we denote this a Q, you know, all column vectors involved in this are orthogonal to each other. And also we can actually chop the uh, um, magnitude of each vector to be unit. So also normal matrix can be created and which is to uh, transform this one to uh, this you know, lower um, triangular form. Okay, that's actually you know, LQ and decomposition. Um, so LQ, the decompositions, uh, you know, I do not want to make this one too automatic. Uh, so let me explain a little bit more. Um, so by the way, the key part is this matrix Q. 
And this one, as I said, each column vector is orthogonal to each other. Okay, so if you put together the Q and then Q transpose, you know, and I'm putting this one this way, Q1, Q1 transpose, it's basically, you know, um, you know, identity matrix. If you um, make a product between Q1 and Q2, they are also going to also actually get zero. Okay, so let's um, um, further investigate this because this particular part is very important. Now, when you look at the MATLAB and the other any other codes, uh, you know, um, you know, you know, um, LQ decomposition. I'm not sure LQ decomposition is involved in that because LQ decomposition is nothing but uh, transpose of uh, so-called the QR decomposition. Basically, they are the same. So let me explain this. Uh, you know, uh, for QR decomposition. Um, um, and then you can just take the transpose of the results. Now, um, think about any uh, a real rectangular, well, it, it doesn't have to be real, it can be a complex number, but you know, uh, let's actually you know, simplify this, just a you know, um, real number, rectangular matrix A, M by N, and then let's say M is larger than N, okay? So given that the matrix A, that can be decomposed to, this also normal matrix times uh, the, this particular form, which is actually, you know, R1 is upper triangular. So the lower and triangular part is all zero. And also in this case, you know, um, you know M is actually larger than N. So uh, here it's in the lesser part is zero uh, in here. The R is, you know, um, uh, N, by, N by N square matrix. And actually you have a short edge here to be consistent with this dimension. And uh, I know M minus N, um, you know, rows are all zero in here. Okay, so, and as I said, you know, um, uh, individual column vectors, um, um, you know, the uh, um, also know, so we satisfy the this conditions, you know, as I described. Uh, last time. So, so actually, you know, maybe you are not so much clear how we can actually make that happen, so, right? So, I know QR decomposition. Um, so, QR recompositions can be done in two ways. Uh, one is a uh, you know very simple uh, Gram-Schmidt uh, orthogonalizations. You learned this one, right? When you took uh, some linear algebra class uh, some time ago, we use that. So. Um, uh, there's a better method, but I know let me explain this uh, um, based on the Gram Schmidt organization. So, matrix A consists of all column vectors A1, A2, up to, um, oh, this one it should be N to be consistent with it, but I, uh, that's not the major point. Okay, so I know how we can actually, uh, you know, um, you know, reduce this one to this particular form, to this particular form. So first, actually, you know, pick up the um, you know first uh, element uh, a1 pointing a certain direction, and a1 is actually defined to be a um, you know, new vector u1. Okay, uh, u1 is basically the same one as uh, a1. Now we like to find the second uh, the vector u2, which is to be perpendicular to uh, a1. Um, but I know if you pick the A2 from this matrix A2, A2 is not necessarily perpendicular to A1, right? So let's actually correct this in a sense and you know, project in some way so that it is to be perpendicular to A1. The way you do it is that, you know, um, well, you take the um, um, yeah, inner product with this, you know, uh, A1 or U1, okay? Um, and you know, uh, project this one onto vector u1. Um, you get the uh, some you know you know basically a cosine of this angle to this one, right? So that is this guy. Uh, the, this you know um, you know and the notation uh, this uh, you know you know this mark is to represent the inner product inner product between a2 and you need the vector pointing in this direction, that's a U1 divided by its own magnitude, the U1, right? So this is actually this length, okay? So, you know, we now find the vector OB. 
So, you know, OC, which we would like to create, and that is perpendicular to this, you know, uh, U1, is to be OC equal OA minus, you know, OB. And then, so we can find the OC in this way, right? So with that in mind, you know, let's actually formulate this. You know, U1 is the same one as A1, and U2 is basically computing this. You know, A2 is originally, you know, OA, right, this guy minus projection of A2 onto you know, U1, U1. And that is actually uh, magnitude of this and in, in this direction. So let's write it you know, some uh, equations. Um, oops, oh, we'll write it in, in on the next page, okay? So we do that kind of stuff. And then A3 is popping, should be perpendicular to both A1 and then A2. And then we do the same uh, you know, the, before. So A3 is a, a projection onto A1, and then also a projection onto A2 must be subtracted from A, A3. So that's actually you know, the way to create the U3, okay? And uh, you know, we use you know, U1 over its own, you know, you know, magnitude. So this E1, E2, E3 are all unit vectors, okay? So, um, yeah, you know, so that, that's actually compute the U2. You know, I, I was in the middle of the uh, compu you know, computing um, uh, U2. That's O C equal O A minus O B, right? Uh, o A is actually A2 itself, and then O B is basically the magnitude is this much, and then which is in the direction of uh, uh, unit vector U1 uh, over U1 magnitude, right? So let's write it. This is the scalar quantity. Right, magnitude, and then this is the unit vector pointing in the direction of U1, right? So, and actually, uh, you can rewrite this in this way. This is actually, you know, may maybe you know, uh, you you saw this in the same expression some time ago when we studied the partial least squares. Um, you know, the data matrix must be deflated, and uh, we see that this kind of a um, projection matrix in here. So we use that, you know, here too. Okay, so um, you know uh, E one is to be U one by you know divided by its own magnitude, right? So we, we can actually compute that this one E one E two E three all you know, obtained because we can find the you know, use. So you know how we can rewrite the matrix A and then decompose it to a Q and a R, right? So here's a you know uh, expression A one is well A one can be written in this way. A one is actually original form. Um, it's in the direction of E1, the unit vector, and the magnitude is this much, which is actually, you know, um, yeah, uh, A2, um, excuse me, yeah, A1 um, in this direction itself, so that is putting here. The meaningful part is A2. A2 is basically having two components, um, and one is the E1 direction, and the other is E2, right? So along the E1, in um, a you know, projection of this one onto this is this much. So this magnitude, the E1, A2, um, and all, uh, in a product times in this direction, E1, and then uh, you know, E2 in a product of uh, A2, that this magnitude in the direction of E2, right? Likewise, A3 can be decomposed to uh, you know, three components, three axes, and going you know, in this way. So let's put it into a matrix form. So if you look at the uh, A1 here, A1 is here. So uh, that's actually a first row of you know, Q um, you know, uh, times actually you know, R, you know, put in this one. So yeah, you know, you know, you know, as you, pro, you know, make the uh, um, product between these two, it is to pick the E1 and the E1, uh, you know, in a product that's exactly this guy, right? And the second A2 is actually second row, second column involved in here. So that's actually, uh, uh, we, um, we pick the, uh, um, you know, Q from here and then the second, uh, second uh, you know, column from here that is actually a first element and uh, multiply the E1, um, A2 um, in the product. So that is multiplied to the first, uh, first uh, the vector here, E1. So E1 times this, and then E2 times this, that's exactly this. 
So you can just you know, form a uh, upper triangular uh, matrix uh, um, along with the uh, E's, which are all um, um, uh, unit length uh, vectors, and they are all orthogonal to each other, right? So we can actually create this uh, you know, um, QR decomposition. And here, you know, system identification. So here we uh, use the, it's in transposed form that uh, actually LQ uh, decomposition. Okay, so um, that's actually, after this point is almost a review. <laughs> um, um, yeah, because of this uh, subsystem idea is a little complicated. So, you know, you need more review. So um, I just, and quickly summarize the things that we discussed uh, and then extended the, um, you know, organization or how you create the, um, you know, triangular matrix, right? So based on this, we can now introduce the first uh, algorithms, uh, uh, MOSP um, algorithms. This is a multivariable output error state space method, whatever, whatever the names. Okay, uh, this is one of the most prevailing um, um, method. So from LQ decomposition, we create the, uh, the, this, you know, um, yeah, you know, um, you know, you know, we take the uh, transpose. So, you know, um, in the previous case, uh, A equal what? A equal Q times uh, R, right? So now we take the transpose, it becomes um, first the lower, um, you know, triangular uh, block triangular matrix sitting here, and then the Q's and transpose, okay? Transpose, you know, when you take a transpose of, you know, matrix product, you have to swap the order, right? So it's resulting here, cool. So from here, we can immediately say U O K one is this times this. So U O K minus one equal L one one um, Q one, you know, transpose. Okay. The sec from the second round, uh, second line, um, I'll put the data matrix Y O K equal L two one times this and L two two times this. Right. That's in here. Okay. So we like to use these actually, you know, uh, forms to solve the uh, to find the um, mid, um, system matrices A B C D. So record that uh, you know. Input and output data matrix are related in this, you know, big uh, matrix relationship, right? So here the you know observability matrix O, and we put together the all the you know um, uh, states uh, x zero to x n minus one sitting here, um, and then um, topless matrix and uh, input the, uh, the data matrix, right? Hmm. So first, uh, let's you know write this guy by using um, rewriting this by using this. So first, uh, you know, um, U O K one K one is now replaced by this. So let's put in here, and so you know O K X naught plus the topless times uh, here L one one Q one transpose. Right, I just plug in this one into this. Right. Also, second equation here, uh, saying that the you know output to data matrix in a wide can be written this way, so we can write this one in this way. So this is the expression we obtain. Obtain. Okay. So what what can we do with it? So I just wrote the uh, same e expressions and uh, sitting here. So now um, conveniently, because uh, um, um, Q's are basically orthonormal matrices, right? So you, you remember that this relationship, you know, Q1, Q2 uh, cross product is a zero, right? So let's actually, uh, you know, post the multiply, post the mul multiply Q2 to both, both actually it's both side. So this one, okay, X not the Q2 trans, uh, you know, Q2 sitting here, right? You know, that's actually this term. And you know, if you post a multiply Q2, this one's actually basically gone, right? And this term's gone. And then this term, because Q2 transpose to Q2 is basically, you know, I. So, um, you know, we can write it, you know, in, in this way. So that's actually gone. So we can write the, this one L22. 
Okay, now, you know, so once we have this expression, now we take the singular value uh, decomposition of L22. Okay, L22 is actually you know, obtained from this, you know, um, LQ decomposition, right? So L22 is basically known, right? And remember, this is the key part of the zero input response. You know, here's a zero, so that's good stuff. So, um, yeah, you know, uh, look at this L22, and then we take the singular value decomposition of L22. And L22 is now decomposed into uh, this form, where, um, yeah, you know, um, you know, sigma one and in the U's and the V's are basically, you know, coordinate to transformations and the real magnitude information is setting the uh, sigma one, right? Sigma one, actually, I know uh, the zero and the part is, we can forget about that. So we can actually reduce this one to, into this form. So L22 equal this. So now we actually balance the you know, realization and technique and we, um, I know, uh, you know, compare the this guy with this, right? With this, then um, um, then we can put the half of it into this and half of it into this. The particularly important is actually okay. This observability uh, matrix. Let's take the u one and actually half of this guy, maybe a square root of uh, that one, which we defined last time. Right, you know, square root of it can be combined with the u1. That's uh, okay. We can actually um, uh, construct the uh, okay. That is okay to do. Now, remember, okay is actually uh, you know having a very favorable form because c is there, sitting there. So if you pick the first uh, what first uh, um, m, no, 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 and I'll put the numbers in p. Um, you know, P rows from this matrix, that's actually, uh, you know, C, we can construct the C, you know, by picking up the uh, this part, okay? So one, the, one P. Now, you know, as we did the before, um, you know, last time, A matrix can be obtained by, um, you know, just sliding in this a little bit. So, you know, if you take uh, this first, uh, the, this part, you know, times A equals basically, you know, less, you know, less of part than this part. So just one slide A is to uh, create this expression where A is factored out. And by taking the pseudo inverse of this guy, we can actually find the A. A equals pseudo inverse, you know, this pseudo inverse times this, okay? So now we found this, you know, uh, matrix C and the matrix A. And there is a part of the matrix B and the D, but I know that's actually a little ugly and tedious uh, pro procedure. So, so we don't want to actually, I don't want to actually go through that one. I just leave this one to some textbook or whatever, um, or a matrap, um, um, but that can be, you know, uh, determined from this, okay? Um, but I think that's good enough uh, to convince you that uh, the, you know through uh, this procedure so we can determine um, uh, systems uh, quotient uh, matrices A B C D um, you know in this way so that's actually uh, you know most uh, um, method that's um, the uh, yeah I'd like to take a little break in here oh, one uh, good question. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that's really um, <laughs> maybe uh, someone sleeping. I, I know this is a little difficult to <laughs> absorb. But uh, Komak, did you hear some kind of uh, sleeping, snowing <laughs> noise? <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> no, sir. I said that back at the start of the video when you were asking if we all had good sleeps last night. Oh, I said, oh, you know, I, I thought that, uh, you, you know, <laughs> you know, my, my talk today is not so much actually understandable and uh, someone fell in sleep, you know, <laughs> that's, <laughs> no, okay, <laughs> okay, <Ooh. laughs> but this is tough, okay. Um, question, Professor. Sure, go ahead, Charles. So here, when we do have just uh, like generic input output data, we get that this L22 is just related to the observability matrix. Uh -huh. When we add 
the earlier in the earlier approach, like last time when we constructed the Henkel matrix just from the right, right. Ones, we got that the um, the Henkel matrix was like OK, CK. Right, right. Any way to also get the controllability matrix here or mm -hmm. get that when we have generic. Yeah, data. that's actually a departing point uh, from the, uh, you know, whole uh, column, um, you know, realization method. Uh, yeah, we took a little bit in a different uh, you know, pathway. So, you know, uh, the, you know, upper triangular matrix uh, we created uh, through, um, you know, LQ decomposition. That is not necessarily the same type of, uh, um, you know, zero input uh, uh, response um, where we end up with the nice Henkel matrix of the impulse response ones, right? Now that's actually a whole matrix and a whole Kahneman, you know, approach, right? We, I've at the um, similar, you know, zero input type of, uh, you know, matrix, we confirm the original arbitrary data matrix W, uh, U and then Y into the upper um, and a lower triangular form, that's right, through uh, LQ uh, decomposition. But that one does not actually necessarily produce the same type of, uh, you know, Henkel matrix that we used in the, uh, in the whole Kanma. Yeah, you know, you know, this procedure is a little bit different from that, but you know, um, I just, you know, show that the whole Kahneman method to let you really, you know, understand that kind of a treatment is possible. Yeah, if data has a certain properties, it is always possible to do kind of, you know, do kind of a um, thought experiment. Real experiments, you get the that the data, right? That data, right? But by doing the column, you know, uh, manipulation, we can virtually create the desired the input, the output, the, the data. And then one form is purely, you know, impulse response. So that's actually, you know, used for whole Kahneman, right? You know, um, but I know, um, I know MOSIP, which is based on the LQ uh, decomposition, uses some similar type of, you know, um, you know triangular matrix but that's not necessarily the same ones, but you know, it can actually achieve the goal and even more reliably. Impulse response is actually very scant uh, input to excitations. So it's not uh, really, you know, uh, reliable, but instead uh, if you use the, you know, copious in the in input output the data and then by manipulating uh, this actually column vectors and to create a certain good stuff and that's much more, you know, reliable, right? That's the most method. But I think it's a, you know, uh, you can, uh, this, this, this actually, you know, the story is good enough for you to accept this method, right? <laughs> so that's the point. Any challenge, you know, any, anything or something unclear in this? Yeah, you know, you have to create the input out of the data to satisfy three conditions. And that's actually critical. You have to check that to, you know, rank conditions, right? But rank conditions sometimes are very tricky. And so some, having some, you know, um, in a numerical instability problem, you know, if something you know, going wrong. Yeah, so that's actually the, the unique. Okay, let me continue. And then next method is, um, I hope, uh, yeah, this guy. And next uh, method is enforce it. Um, so uh, N and or for SID uh, that came from multivariable output error state space method. What's okay, actually awkward in English, but uh, um, you have uh, you know um, in the many uh, you know S. Um, oh, there's no O. Where's O? Multivariable. Uh, I think it's from most. Oh, I did not write it. And I wrote the wrong one. <laughs> That's right. Right, right. So, um, yeah, right, right. This is a typo. I had to uh, and modify this, um, the uh, um, new one. That's the real name um, is algorithms for, algorithms for, I know, subspace uh, system identifications. So I know, and then read it, enforce it. 
um, you know, I, I had to put this one into, in the, it said, and the full name, I remember that numerical algorithms for subspace system identification. Why is this hard force S? I just, oh, subspace state, uh, subspace state system identification, whatever. Okay, now we have four folds. Okay, and then we read it and, you know, enforce it. Okay, this is name. Um, it actually came out uh, in 90s, vintage of 1994 by Obasi and the Demore. Okay, um, so, you know, this method too, we use the, you know, similar technique LQ decompositions and the singular value decompositions. And also um, we use a little different uh, in a mathematical technique, it's called uh, oblique uh, projections. But uh, let me explain this without going to uh, too much in the technical part. Just, uh, I know, I think the concept is important. So here in this method, uh, you know, data structure is a little bit different. Okay, uh, we do create the input, uh, the data in this way. So this one, you know, U O, to uh, UK minus one. But also, you know, this, this one is to cover uh, time zero to K minus one. We continue to create the input data starting a K to two K minus one. And I uh, know this part is called the past and then this part is called the future. And then uh, U zero K minus one up to this point uh, denoted that the UP passed. And then uh, next one starting from K to two K minus one is denoted the UF for future. Okay. Accordingly, um, the output side two, we have a Y zero K minus one, which is a past uh, output. And then uh, um, you know, output uh, Y, oops, this must be capital Y, sorry about that. Capital Y, K, 2K minus one, uh, page 14. Okay, I know um, this one is to be called the future output uh, YF. Okay, and they are related, input output are related, you know, through uh, this big matrix, uh, you know, relationship, remember, using the observability matrix and then topless matrix, right? Together with the, uh, you know, uh, state X not, uh, right? So, you know, and X not, actually this is a concatenation of, uh, you know, X zero, X one, X two, and that's a state variable to put in together. And then up to K minus one, and that's actually using here, you know, and then labeled as X past. And then this is the X future. And then we have, you know, uh, the same type of, uh, you know, equations. So we, we create the data in this way. And then we have to, uh, you know, We'll put, together, put together three assumptions. They are basically the same thing as before. So, you know, XP, that's actually, we use only XP, uh, you know, <clears throat> for the most, uh, most you know, method. Um, but I know we request the same uh, um, <clears throat> full rank um, conditions for X future, um, you know, state variables too. And the second assumption, persistently exciting uh, input, uh, not only uh, U past, uh, U future too, you know, um, KM, rank KM, and then, you know, put them together to rank two KM. And the third assumption is that, uh, you know, um, uh, input U should not be created based on this uh, linear state of feedback. So, you know, XP, which is actually a state versus uh, use, <clears throat> they do not overlap for both the past and the future. Okay. And, you know, do, you know under these assumptions, it is possible to uh, create the, any uh, you know, possible input output relationship uh, for both, you know, you know, future part and past part of uh, input output sequences. And if you arrange things in this way, that can be created by the uh, data mat matrices of input to output and the you know, past to future data matrix um, by manipulating the columns of that the data big data matrix. We should be able to create any you know um, you know uh, input output. Okay, 
And uh, among these, what we like to do is to create the, uh, some particular you know, um, form. And you know, uh, we, we prefer to use uh, this arrangement. First, the block is future input, and then uh, past the input, and past the output, and then future output. Well, we like to put put the deeds two together, and that's a key point. Okay, and just making this one. But you know, um, it that, that's for the purpose of notational simplicity. So, so if you pick the uh, right, uh, you know, uh, in a column combinations, column vector combination, we should be able to, uh, you know, create a certain form, you know, like this kind of uh, zero input uh, uh, response. In particular, this can be rearranged to uh, this form. Which is actually uh, you know zero 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 and something here you know lower um, lower um, um, you know triangular matrix right <clears throat> now this particular element is interesting this block should be zero because all the inputs of both in the past and the future times are zero right and the outputs in the past uh, outputs are also zero so I know. No way that the future output is to take anything, you know, um, non-zero you know, output. So this particular part is to be zero. So we should be able to create this such actually, um, you know, triangular uh, matrix where the last, uh, you know, um, uh, quantum blocks are all zero. Okay, we exploit these properties. So now, you know, um, this is the past part of the data matrix. And uh, you know, we applied LQ decomposition. So you know, just a notational I know point in it, you know, um, this you know UP, YP are actually placed in here, right? And that is now WP. And then we take the uh, LQ decomposition so that the left um, triangular uh, matrix is created right here, sitting here. And then you know, Q transpose are sitting here. Okay, Qs are you know, also normal. Um, matrix. Okay, I satisfied this in the conditions. By the way, the uh, you know dimensions are to tricky. So R11 is actually a, you know an KM by KM. That's actually a square matrix R11, one, um, corresponding to uh, UF, and then actually Q1 the transpose, and then the dimension is a KM KM. Or M is actually the dimension of the input. And then we put together K of them, right? And they in creating the, um, <clears throat> you know, Henkel matrix, right? Okay. And other two, two is to cover this all past part. So the dimension is, you know, M input and then, I uh, you know, P output. And then we repeat it in the K times. So K M plus P, K M plus P, that's actually square matrix so sitting here, you know, other two, two. And the other out of two, uh, three, one, out of three, two, uh, having the consistent the, the dimensions. Okay, so when we read out the, the, this relationship, we can create the three equations, right? You know, UF equal R11 Q1 transpose, right? And the WP is actually reading out the R21, this R22, this, and here. So that's actually this guy. And the last one, and yf this times this and this times this and we don't have this so that's actually cool part okay then you know we get the three equations coming out of this okay now we assume that the you know uh uf is of full rank you know um so r11 this this is actually came by came matrix it must be you know full rank so we take the inverse to it and the q1 transpose can be written in this way yeah, and then also, you know, we, uh, you know, use the same technique developed for MOSIP. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, MOSIP uh, basically look at the only, you know, this part, right? You know, UPYP part. And uh, we, you know, took the uh, uh, QR decompositions of this guy into this form. And then uh, we know that the uh, this dimension is K plus N. You know, in fact, the, the, the you know number of a row and the columns in here is in you know, a K parenthesis M plus P, which is actually bigger than N, you know, K plus N. So, you know, there's no actually, uh, you know, on this, you know, R22 is not the uh, full rank um, in, you know, um, 
uh, non-singular matrix, but instead it's actually rank deficit uh, matrix. So um, yeah, you know, uh, from here, uh, we'd like to find the Q2, just as we did in here from the first line, and we'd like to solve the Q2. But I know uh, in this one, uh, we need to take the inverse to R22, which does not exist. So we take the pseudo inverse of R22. So uh, with that, uh, you know, Q2, uh, you know, transpose, solving this one for Q2 transpose, is R22 pseudo inverse uh, times, you know, this minus this guy, WP minus R21 Q1. Okay. So now we happen to use equation four, and then we now use the equation five and the six. So let's put them together again. So equation four, we have not to use this one. Um, so um, I know this, this two, uh, you know, we just obtained the Q1, Q2, right? Hmm. So now actually, you know, uh, let's sub substitute the five and six uh, into four. So YF can be written as, you know, three, two, one, Q1. And let me just, you know, um, you know insert the, um, you know, this one, you know, into this at all. And so, yeah, you know, Q2 transpose is re replaced by this here. And then let's collect the term with respect to uh, Q1. We put together these two terms sitting here. And Q1 is now replaced by, you know, R11 inverse UF, okay? And then leaving this term, you know, R32, R22 pseudo inverse and a WP, okay? You have no clue where, where you are and then where we are going, but I you know, trust me, we, we can go to something, you know, useful directions. Um, now, we need to do, this is really a subspace method. So we look at the, which, you know, um, uh, subspace uh, each terms exist and that kind of analysis is a you know, key part. So first uh, it, let's, ex, you know, examine the you know, relationship uh, uh, between UF and the WP, UF and the WP. It turns out that UF and WP are actually, um, you know, um, not actually an overlapping at all. They are actually involved in a totally different uh, subspaces. And let's actually prove it. So we know that the YP and then um, UP, XP are related in this way, right? This is the equation that we use many times. This implies that the YP is actually, you know, spinned by XP and then the UP. Maybe you don't feel comfortable with this kind of a word. So let me just uh, explain this a little bit. Uh, um, so let's see, you know, uh, YP, let's look at the, uh, you know, one particular uh, row vector involved in here. Okay. And, you know, this row vector, you pick the, you know, particular, you know, um, you know, row here and then multiply in here. and then, but let's first look at this one and this one, right? So, you know, this row vector is, uh, in fact, you know, we can write, uh, uh, let's see, uh, this guy, you know, consists of many uh, row vectors, you know, let me see, a second row vector is something like this, and a third row vector is something, uh, maybe I just write two lines over here, right? So look at the first component here, first component here. That's actually, you know, um, you know we take the, uh, you know, something from here and then, some, you know, times this, and then actually, uh, you know, um, you know, the next one and the next one, the next one, next one, right? So if this line consists of, uh, let's see, parameters, so first one, A, and next one is B, and then the next one is C, coming from this matrix OK. Then under this line, uh, row vector, can be written as a, you know, A times A times this row, and a B times this row, and a C times this row, right? Right, because, you know, this, you know, comes to this, and so, you know, 
every component involved here can be written in a linear combination of these actually row vectors, right? So, you know, if you see this kind of relationship, we can say that, you know, um, all row, rows involved in this uh, matrix is basically, you know, created by linear combinations of the row vectors uh, involved here. So suppose you know, we look at the uh, space spanned by row vectors of XP. This actually, you know, all, you know, row vectors here is basically spanned by these row vectors, right? Linear combination of row vectors or involved in the uh, subspace spanned by these row vectors. Now we have another term here. So we have to say that you know, um, every row vector is involved in YP is basically you know, involved in the subspace spanned by XP and then the subspace spanned by UPs, you know, row vectors. So that's what, what this means. This implies that YP is spanned by XP and then you know, uh, UP. In other words, all the row vectors of YP are linear combinations of row vectors involved in XP and the UP. So we can write it this way. Okay, UP, YP, and let's look at the YP, this is most important. The YP is basically spanned by UP and then XP. If you put the, all the row vectors together involved in the, uh, this XP and then UP, you know, whatever the order in this way, you know, this collections of row vectors uh, can span the space where that the YP exists. Well, we can put the UP here. So that actually uh, we can say that the WP, WP is basically a span um, by you know, UP and XP combinations. Okay. So now second point is, um, yeah, from assumption to, you know, rank of UP, YFP, you know, 2KM. This is actually, you know, one, you know, I know assumption that we, we made, right? Yeah. Um, the persistent excitation conditions coming here. And you know, um, this implies no overlap between the UP and FP because actually each of them does a KM in a rank of KM. If some of the row vectors are also involved in here, that's bad, right? It actually can't be actually full rank like this, but I know all of these actually, you know, um, you know um, having a KM, uh, you know, um, uh, independent, uh, linearly independent uh, vectors in each, so totally 2KM. So th they are actually, you know, not uh, intersecting, you know, at all. And then assumption three, no linear feedback means the, you know, state is not, and you know, actually input is not created by the uh, linear combination of the state, which is basically a linear state feedback. No, 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 you know, state feedback is involved in this experimental data. So that's assumption three. So with this, we can say that you know um, UF, UF involved in the here, yeah, um, is actually you know um, you know not the intersecting with the WP, WP, WP is actually a UP and an XP, and uh, you know we found that the uh, UP, UP and then UF are not actually intersecting. So uh, no, uh, we can say that the UF and the WP are not intersecting. That said that this term WP is sitting here and then UF is sitting here. These two terms are belonging in, in totally different uh, subspaces. So we can say you know, YF is something times UF and then you know, plus something times WP, but uh, these two are in a totally different uh, subspaces. Um, so the linear algebra, you know, we say that you know the, this 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 one is basically a direct sum because they are actually coming from the totally you know, different uh, space. So, so so for instance, in the three dimensional case, yeah. So the, this is the space of UF, for instance, right? You know, and then WP is perpendicular to it, something like this. So if you pick the, any vector over here, any vector here. You know, this is a combination of, uh, you know, uh, this, you know, components and actually projecting this one onto this, you know, the, this component, right? So that, that's what I'm saying, you know, you know, coming from, uh, you know, this side and then coming from uh, this side and a uh, direct sum between the two. Okay. 
Um, although it is not that actually simple, it's not the orthogonal and ob oblique things, but you know, um, we, we don't have to know that. And at this point, these two are you know, involved in totally different uh, subspace. Okay, this is the almost the last one. Um, so let's look at the another equation. You know, um, this is actually standard one in you know, a future output to sequence of YF uh, uh, data matrix can be written this way, you know, observability matrix, and then, um, you know, uh, topolets matrix, and then input the sequence of, um, you know, data matrix, right? And uh, from assumption three, you know, no feedback. So these X and the U are not intersecting. So what we can say is that, you know, uh, these two are not intersecting, right? So this two is actually, you know, YF is a direct sum between XF space, and then you have space, right? You know, this is also the direct sum, right? So let's see, let me just skip to this part. Uh, you know, we had the two IF. This is the equations and we derived all the way from um, that, uh, you know, LQ decomposition, you remember? This is the equation that we derived by putting into this, right? This, let me just put this one, cut and paste. Uh, into here, okay, um, and then the next one is just the one that we, you know, um, you know, then basically, you know, uh, the point is that the UF and the XF are direct to sum, you know, they are not actually, you know, intersecting. So, you know, before that, uh, the, we show that the UF and the WP are not intersecting, right? Direct to sum. This part is also direct sum. We are representing the same YF you know, direct sum to direct sum. And uh, we can also show that the XP and the YP are actually, you know, um, related. So we can say that this is actually a UF and UF, right? UF and UF. So, you know, these two must be the same and that these two must be the same. And particularly useful is actually, you know, this equals this, and then that is a, this equation, this equation. And then this equation is particularly useful because this part is all known, right? And then we like to obtain OK and then XF. Again, we can take the uh, singular value decomposition and then determine this part and then this part, right? So let's do that. So, so this is the, our you know, very end results. And then we take the um, singular value decompositions of this term expand into this way and then we look at this and uh, u1 v1 are actually left and right uh, singular um, um, you know uh, vectors and uh, sigma one is to be split uh, and half and a half and half of them you know are going to okay and then half of them are going to xf the particularly interesting is going to xf right xf of course you know these two you know, uh, splitting it, this one into two is not unique. At least the, the uh, you know, uh, non-singular matrix T uh, can be combined here. But I know the point is that, you know, half of the singular, I know, uh, matrix in here, uh, sitting here, right? So let's look at this. Let's look at this. This is uh, interesting because the XF consists of, you know, series of XK, XK, XK plus one, xk, blah, 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 n minus one, right? You remember that the, if we can find the state, that's all set, you know, game set, right? If we take a, if we take a Pennsylvania, you know, the Democrats win. So if we know x, you know, we actually, you know, find everything, right? So let's focus on this. Let's focus on this. And then let's take this trick on xk to xk, plus n minus one, let's chop it, you know, one you know, term before that, uh, chop that one, and then we write it the x capital xk bar, and x bar k plus one is one shifted in here, one shifted to here, okay? So one time step uh, future one. Accordingly, you know, input uh, and then output can be chopped in this way. We create this guy, okay? So this is actually taken directly from your an experimental data. And then this is great because we can present this way, right? 
x bar k plus one, I'm talking about the, this line, okay. It's a, b, a times x, k, and the b times the uk. Now let me check the, you know, um, term by term. You pick the first one, x, k plus one here, okay, first one, you know, a times the first, uh, you know, um, you know, column x, k plus, uh, you know, coming here, you know, b times, uh, you know, first uh, element uk, that's basically, x k plus one equal a x k plus you know, b u k. Likewise, the second line, you know, you pick the um, you know k x k plus two. And that's a times x k and then b and u and k plus one. Um, you know, y components two, you can you can do the exactly the same thing. You know, this times this is to um, you know uh, coming from the original set of equations. So this is a interesting, right? Once we have uh, the x, you know, xk, xk plus one, then uh, actually this is the parameters to uh, you know, estimate, uh, you know? And that's our goal. So we just uh, take the standard, these squares. So this is it. This is actually, uh, you know, uh, you get the unique solution, unique actually in a convex optimization. And this is it, that is the final answer. So that's the enforce it in the method. Okay. These two methods, the most often the enforce it are very similar, you know, but a little than different mathematical techniques. And in the most after we use the you know, orthogonal projection and then and enforce it, you know, uh, oblique projection. The one that I said and you know, these two are um, you know direct sounds. Um, mathematically, it can be represented in a little you know neater method. That's actually you know oblique projection, which I did not actually use that confusing notation, but I know uh, that's good enough for this. So that's all about the for today. Um, I hope uh, you can use uh, both methods uh, in your professional activities, and uh, I know if you like, uh, we can give you some kind of an assignment to program, numerical assignment programs. Then you really appreciate you know um, putting the input output to the data data into that uh, Hengen matrix form, boom, you get the A, B, C, D. And then that's actually, uh, you can use that. And also remember that the things are not explained by that, we call that the residue. For state part, the residue, and then actually observation part, the residue. And if you collect these, after you, you know, extract all information you can observe with the form of X, equal x plus uh, you know, bu and y equals cx plus uh, the, the u. If you extract that part, the garbage part can be treated as a kind of random noise. And from that, uh, you can actually find the covariance uh, matrices of those actually uh, residual terms, which we cannot say that's a random process, but I know something uh, we can treat in a random process. If that's the case, that's actually, you are ready for applying the common filter for doing this. Um, there's actually more sophisticated techniques and you know, how you deal with the uh, uncertainties into that uh, based on Akaike's method or NMY, linear matrix um, you know, inequality. That's the techniques being used for stochastic uh, um, subsystem method. Uh, that's a highly actually uh, you know, uh, more sophisticated and uh, useful, but I know you know, I think uh, studying this deterministic terms that you are ready to um, um, you know, study that. So with that, actually, this is to conclude the system identification. So we study both, uh, you know, subsystem method and then error prediction method. Uh, that's actually, you know, big two methods and uh, we cover that. I hope you can use it. Well, most of the simple traditional ones, you just stay with the, you know, um, prediction error method. Uh, that uh, you can get the body plot, uh, you can get the uh, you know some uh, transfer functions and easily, but I uh, you know open times we need to use uh, state space representations. I you know definitely recommend to use that uh, um, subsystem method. Yeah, this part is a uh, very difficult to understand, <laughs> but you know, I appreciate uh, you uh, stay with me today. Okay, any other speaker questions? Um, and then again, I do not have the full text, uh, you know, um, you know, lecture notes, uh, but uh, if you can find, uh, I'm not sure whether that uh, textbook uh, book chapter is posted and that's, 
I'm, I'm not sure whether we can do that, but I, and I hope you can find some way to get that uh, chapter if you want to study more. Yeah. But just a basic concept that uh, just uh, following that uh, um, uh, slide deck that I posted, that'll be good enough. Oh. Professor Sada? Yep. I had a question on the last or second to last slide. Mm. Um, what What is the matrix T where we have like XF is T inverse? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. T is whatever the you know uh, non singular matrix. So, you know, as I said, um, real, realization that you need to find the state, right? You construct the state, right? But the state, the choice of state is not actually unique. You know, at least they, at the end, you want to actually you know um, you know you know change the coordinate systems. You know, facing this way. No, no, I don't want to use uh, the, that coordinate system. I want to use uh, this coordinate system. But you know, if the correspondence is one to one, there's no you know new information, or we don't use lose any information. That can be represented by non singular matrix T applied to uh, the, that actually you know uh, representation. That's what I said. Yeah. So so you know we split it between the two. One side is a T, and then the other side the T inverse. They put together, you know, back to back. So it, it doesn't. So it could be an arbitrary matrix, or the idea. Well, yeah, you know, just to make it uh, more flexible. So if you have some preferred uh, coordinate system, uh, you can, you know, transfer that from there to there. Yeah. I see. Thank so, you. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you uh, next uh, on Monday. Then we go to uh, you know uh, neural net. Uh, that's way simple. You know you don't need to use many of uh, your brains. You know just a small portions of that that is good enough to understand. Way simple ones. So yeah. Okay. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Have a good one. Bye. Professor Asad, I just wanted to add that the book that you were mentioning is available oh. through MIT libraries. It must be. It must be. It, yeah, you know. it is. It is. I posted the link on Slack also in the chat here. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Yeah, I appreciate that. And then the people can read it. It has many things like, uh, you know, stochastic process, you know, many, uh, you know, t more advanced techniques, are, you know, um, put in there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Professor? Yeah. Um, I have um, another question. Um, cool. For these methods, is zero input the only type of signal that can be used? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, so we prefer, you know, random signals, right? If you can use that, then that's great. Yeah, random signals. So, you know, um, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, pseudo random uh, binary signals, but I you know if you pick something very really richly exciting, the systems, you know, you can put it in, into that, uh, you know, uh, Henkel matrix. That almost automatically satisfy the assumption one and uh, actually, you know, the two. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, uh, depending on the process, uh, you are not allowed to put the, any drastic signals, right? Then uh, you must be careful in, the, in the using this. Yeah. So, you know, in you know, uh, open times, we are restricted to, to use the, you know, um, you know, rich variety of signals, input signals. You know, if that's the case, you have to give up. First of all, you can't actually, you know, identify the systems to the say, you know, fifties order systems, right? You know, the input signals that you can put is rich enough to uh, excite, say, up to say tenth order systems. You have to stay with the tenth order systems, and then leave the all the other parts and model dynamics or you know, random signals. Yeah, so you know, uh, most of, you know, method in particular, you can specify the preferred target order of the system N, right? Yeah, um, and then that one is a very subtle part because you know uh, sometimes you have to look at the what is the richness of your input, and then actually uh, you know look at that. It's basically you know a persistent excitation, you know condition, you know a persistent condition to which order, yeah. To which order? Well, you know, in the past, uh, I had the two more lectures on persistent excitation conditions, but I know uh, many other materials uh, are to be involved. So I regrettably eliminated the, that the sections. But I uh, you know, um, yeah, you know, richness of the input is central issues um, in the system ID. Yeah, 
Uh, if we don't have any uh, uh, restrictions, go to uh, random signals. That's actually guaranteed to be best. Did I, yeah, is that okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay. Okay, very good. We'll see you. Thank you. See you. Thank you. See you. Bye.